We're less than 500 days from Election Day 2024. So let's take the pulse of the nation. Between the president's CPAP marks, you saw him, cocaine gate and the disastrous rollout of Bidenomics, not to mention Hunter, Democrats are spiraling right now. And why wouldn't they be worried? NBC News shows that 70 percent, 70 of Americans believe Biden should not run for reelection. That includes 51 percent of Democrats, a majority of his own party. His overall approval rating stands at just 40.5 percent. To put that into context, there's, there hasn't been a less popular president at this point in over 40 years. As a result, some Democrats find themselves desperate for an alternative. Enter Gavin Newsom. Now, he's 55 years old, and he's become the latest Democrat proxy to hit the campaign trail for Biden. And even though he denies any interest in running in 2024, mm -hmm, some observers are beginning to question his motivation. One California GOP consultant saying, quote, he's putting in time and effort that no one else outside the White House appears to be doing. He's acting like the candidate in waiting. Someday, it may actually pay off for him. Joining me now to discuss Doug Schoen, Democrat pollster and former advisor to President Clinton. Matt Towery, he's a chairman of Insider Advantage. And Tom Bevan, president and co-founder of Real Clear Politics. Three smart dudes on politics to give us the pulse of the nation. So, Doug, what do you make of this idea that Gavin Newsom is somehow the Democrats ace in the hole for 2024. Do you think that's true or is this just cable news fodder? No, no, no. I think what Gavin Newsom is doing, Pete, is positioning himself in case Joe Biden does not win, <clears throat> that he is in a position to step into the race. Kamala Harris is the likely nominee if Biden doesn't run, but Newsom is trying to blunt her advantage by touring the country aggressively. He won't run against Joe Biden, very hard to beat an incumbent president, but he is mm -hmm. positioning himself on the eventuality that the president ultimately, for whatever reason, doesn't run for re-election. Yeah, it's obvious. I mean, sometimes things like that are just self-evident. Uh, Matt, are you seeing in the polling at all that the problems at the White House, and I know the cocaine stuff wouldn't be resonating yet, but overall with Hunter and investigations and the smoke, is that having an impact even inside his party? I mean, are, are his poll, have his numbers gone down even more recently? Well, you know, it's funny. I talked to uh, the bowtie pollster, uh, Robert Cahaley, who I'm, I'm launching a podcast with in a couple of weeks. And we talked about this very issue today. We're actually not seeing the penetration of these issues like you would, you would expect. But part of that is because, which <clears throat> has been alluded to uh, all through uh, out this evening, and that is that the, a lot of the legacy media will not cover the issues that are, mm -hmm. are affecting the Bidens. And if they do cover them, for example, the cocaine issue, they get to it, they drop it, and they don't want to really go back. So we're not <clears throat> seeing the numbers change that much. But you have to also understand Biden has reached a certain level, at which I wouldn't expect him to dip substantially below until you had some major incident uh, moving further down. OK, uh, Tom, I, let's let's assume for a moment that Biden is the nominee. Uh, he's got another crisis <clears throat> potentially waiting for him at the ballot box. According to recent polling, nearly all 86 percent of Hispanics say economic conditions are only fair or they're poor. Three quarters say the same thing about their personal financial situation. And by two to one, they say Joe Biden's policies are hurting their families. So, Tom, how significant in, is this shift? We saw a shift in 2020. The Democrats have long relied on the Hispanic vote in certain key states. Does it cut even worse in their direction? Well, listen, they have to be concerned about the trend <clears throat> over the last few cycles uh, because Donald Trump actually increased his, his vote share with Hispanics. Republicans did in, in 2022 as well. And again, you mentioned it's going to come down to the same key states, and those include Nevada and Arizona, where at, about a third of the population is Hispanic, um, but also places like Florida. Uh, Georgia has a Hispanic population as well. So Hispanics are going to play a pivotal role in the upcoming election, and Democrats need to make sure uh, that they maintain a, a sizable advantage, because if they don't, they're going to have to make that up somewhere else. Yeah, where do you make it up? It's exactly right. Uh, Doug, there's another canary in the coal mine as we move along and pick your brains here for the DNC. There's a, a Washington Post ABC poll that recently asked voters, 
Who do you think did a better job handling the economy? And amongst Hispanics, the response was overwhelming. 55% prefer Donald Trump, just 36% prefer Bidenomics. Do you see that, Doug, translating into changes in voting trends? Oh, I think absolutely, Pete. This is a big problem for the Democrats that uh, is clear and apparent in swing states and indeed nationally. And it puts Senate seats at risk, congressional seats, and the party is yet to address it. My concern is that the Democrats believe Hispanics are only interested in identity politics when they believe in mm. traditional values. They are anti-communist to a very large degree. And as you point out rightly, they are um, substantially impacted by an economy where inflation is up, wages are down, the cost of living is getting ever higher. Yeah, Matt, I mean, how do they address it? If economics is not the way, you know, a lot of Hispanics are much more uh, culturally and socially conservative, I and mean, they don't want gender pronouns for their elementary school students. Uh, I mean, this is, how do they then try to win back that constituency when their base is going so hard in the other direction? I don't know if they can. Um, Doug nailed it. Yes, that, that's an issue that they have not been able to address. And I'd also to what Tom said earlier, look at some of these states like Florida. Uh, look at Orange County, Osceola County, which are counties in central Florida that normally go heavily Democrat in races because of the Puerto Rican population in those counties. This time, DeSantis carried one of those counties and he lost the larger one, Orange, by only four percentage points. This is a trend. You see it with Brian Kemp in Georgia. The Hispanic population continues yep. to drift, even in these midterms in some of these key states, towards the Republican Party. And I don't see any way right now the Democrats are going to stave that off. Uh, at least I've seen nothing that, that indicates that that's going to, take, going to take place until they make some major changes. And some of those are cultural, and I don't think they're going to want to make those cultural changes in their presentation. Yeah. Tom, real quick, back to where we started. I can't let you off the hook. Do you think Biden will be the nominee in your crystal ball with all you've seen? <laughs> Look, I think nah. Democrats are stuck right now. They're stuck with them right now. But I, I agree. I mean, the fact that we're still seeing these stories about Gavin Newsom and other Democrats uh, is because Democrats, they like Biden. Uh, they support him. They like his policies. But they want to give him a gold watch and see him off the stage. They have concerns about his his stamina, <laughs> his age, his mental acuity, and they'd prefer to go with someone younger. They're just stuck with him right now. Yeah, they'd like to say, Joe, just go over there, but they can't. All right, Doug, Matt, and Tom, thank you very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.